The basic incident response cycle, which comes from the NIST guidelines, gives you a structure for dealing with an incident. All of these steps should be familiar from previous videos, but we will go into more detail now. Just because you have an alert, you don't call the entire incident response team together. Usually what happens is the head of the team or the person tasked with reviewing the logs and incidents will take a look at the alert and do a little investigation. This is how you begin to determine if there is an incident based on the advance notices you get via an alert. As we talked about, the alert could come from your monitoring systems or from a person. With the alert notice, you will begin to gather the information you need. If a person walks into your office, or if you received an email from someone, you are going to ask them a lot more information about what they saw and why they thought that was unusual. An alert coming from your monitoring system, you're going to look at that and try to pull out the information. Just exactly what is that alert trying to tell you? And you will be looking to see if there are any other alerts related to the one you're investigating. Once you have those alerts, you're going to start doing your initial investigations. You'll be looking at the information sources you have prepared ahead of time so that you can begin to understand if anything is really going on. Once you have made a determination that the alert requires more investigation, review your alerts and try to understand what it is they're telling you. Look for other alerts that may be related. That's a really important part. There may be other things that are being alerted but didn't rise to the top or mean anything to you at the time. But now that you suddenly have this big important alert, you begin to see that those were steps in the process of getting to where you are now. All of those things put together can tell you this is really a security incident or if something else is going on. Now that you know that this is a real security incident, look to see what logs you have in place. Make sure you really have them. Then determine if you need to get them secured right away. Remember, there is a time frame on each log. A log only lives for so long, and yours might have become very critical. Now you might need to do something to save them and make sure they stay around longer than they normally would. As you investigate the logs, you will begin to characterize what type of impact this incident might have on your system. This process of characterizing the incident is a very ad hoc process. As you gain experience, you will be better able to do this characterization. Things you will want to think about are, is it causing harm today or not? If it is causing harm, it is going to make you do things differently than if it is something out there you can watch. If somebody is doing something in their own allocation, you can probably let that run and do more investigation. If it is something that is impacting other people, is it an old event? Has it been going on for a long time? In a case like this, the impact might already have happened, so it might be better to watch it and get a better understanding for what's going on. Or maybe it's brand new and you need to cut it off right now. These are the things you need to understand and start to make decisions. Who is going to make the decision about what to do? Who are you going to need to pull in on this? What attack vector are they using? These are all early things that help you decide and characterize what the incident is and make the determination and how you're going to approach it. Once you have a characterization of your incident, you need to start pulling together what information you have to really look at the incident in detail. Begin gathering your information. Remember, you might need to move it to a different location in order to better facilitate, examine it, or in order to better protect it. Most likely, this will be all your various log files. These are the logs you identified as the important ones during your initial preparation phase. Remember that things like firewall and NetFlow logs usually have a very short time frame for their lifespan. You will want to get those as quickly as possible and move them to a secure storage location so that you don't have to worry about losing them. You might also want to take snapshots of the system the system is something that is very dynamic, and its state only has meaning during the incident. So these snapshots are not something you can have being done like logging, but it is something that you should be part of your procedure for certain incidents. After you have gathered and secured your information, you need to address mitigation. Is there anything you need to deploy fairly quickly in order to get things under control? 
probably one of the first things you're going to do is increase your monitoring many of the logging and alert systems have various levels of information that they give out during an incident particularly one that is currently going on you might want to up the level of information so that you can really see what's going on in great detail you might also consider making changes to your firewall to stop traffic or even black holing traffic all of this will be based on the determinations you make while investigating the situation what's the right thing to do that's hard to say each situation is different and learning how to decide what the correct action at a particular time is takes experience that's why you want to have made contact with people who have experience and expertise in this type of thing and have their contact information available to you once you have secured your information sources and begun to make some determinations on mitigation there are some additional questions you should consider before you go too much further decide what the response goal is is your plan to search out every detail and piece of information so that you can track down the individual and prosecute or is it you just want to fix things and get everything back up and running deciding these goals is important and will dictate how you pursue your incident response once you have decided what your goals are you need to readdress your response procedures are they currently relevant for the incident you're working hopefully your procedures are in line with your goals however goals can change as time goes on also each incident might have a different goal associated with it for you most likely your procedures won't cover everything that's what makes the post incident review so important it gives you a chance to examine what happened and then modify and grow your procedure if the event you are investigating is going on concurrently with your investigation will you need to perform any type of live real-time analysis if so do you have the tools you need to do that do you know how to use those tools this is something you should consider during your preparation phase these questions are things you'll have to look at during the investigation if you have bad backups or no backups that means you'll need to really dig deep and find out everything that happened so you can undo the damage if you have good backups it might just be simpler to rebuild the system privacy breaches are a special case and of particular note when dealing with PII PHI or any of these special cases you need to most likely contact additional people when an incident occurs a lot more people will care about this type of an incident since it can have far-reaching implications it could violate different federal regulations and you need to be aware of that make sure your plan covers what needs to be done in these types of situations privacy breaches aren't just limited to things covered by federal regulations you need to know what the privacy policy for your organization says too your university most likely covers certain pieces of information with their policy so be aware of that and what you need to do if your incident violates one of those policies if you would like more help with building a security system please contact CTSC you can get contact and other information on the CTSC website trustedci.org CTSC online is made possible by funding from NSF grant number OCI 1234408